Today on Yester Kitchen is part two of my Jello series, and I am gonna make something very boozy and very delicious for you. You're gonna love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen, part food history, part cooking, all delicious. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. So today is part two, Part two of my Jello series, and I am still here to prove to you that Jello is not yuck. It is fabulous, including the recipes from the past. Not all of them, but some of them, actually most of them, are just fabulous. And today we are putting booze into a dessert, and you're gonna love it. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to let you know I'm so excited to announce that the Yester Kitchen store is open. There are aprons. There are mugs with. I love my logo. I am in love with my logo, and I've gotten a lot of comments from you saying you are too. So there are mugs, there are shot glasses, because what bar would be complete without a Yester Kitchen shot glass? That says every drink has a story. I know my tagline is every dish has a story, but you can't put that on a shot glass, right? So bar ready, ready to go. There's some t-shirts up there. Anyway, I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in having some Yester Kitchen merchandise of your own. So today is part two of my Jello series. If you haven't seen part one, it's where I go into the history of the Jello and I make a fabulous dish. It's right there for you to check out. But today, let's get going. We are gonna make something called molded sangria. It is molded, I mean, it's jello, it's what you do with it. But if, if you love sangria, you are gonna love this dish. So this is from 1979, and it's gonna make about 10 servings. This can easily be double, triple, quadruple, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so let's get this started. Very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take two cups of wine. You can use whatever wine you like. I happen to have an old wine Zinfandel that I just really love the flavor. Tip on wine, cooking with wine, cook with wine that you will drink. Don't cook with the leftover wines that you don't really like because you're still gonna have the flavor. So we're gonna start with our two cups of your favorite wine. Whoa, yeah, pan's a little hot, but don't worry, you wanna burn out that alcohol anyway. Sometimes that happens. And we have a quarter cup of brandy, and it goes. So, and you need one tablespoon of orange liqueur. It could be generic, it could be name brands, it could be whatever you want. And if you want a little more information on orange liqueur and another fabulous recipe, check that out. But in the meantime, one tablespoon of orange liqueur. And it goes. Now, we have one cinnamon stick, bam. And we have three or four, you decide, I went with four cloves, whole cloves. These are the guys that go into Christmas hams, you know, it's just, it has a very, very specific flavor, but it tastes fabulous in sangria. Anyway, you wanna let that come to a boil. I absolutely love Jello. It is so versatile, you can do so many things with it. I don't put salami or SpaghettiOs in it, but there's so many great, great, great things you can do with it. So while this is coming to a boil, we're just gonna let that go for just a few minutes because we really want the cinnamon and the cloves to kind of get into that party and impart their flavor. So I have a six ounce package, I'll just show you right, six ounce package of strawberry jello. You can use any red flavor you like, but the original recipe calls for strawberry. So of course I'm gonna do that and strawberry. <laughs> okay, so you just wanna let it boil for a few minutes, just like that, and we're gonna turn off the heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and fish out our cinnamon, it's gonna take me a few extra minutes to find the cloves. Okay, cloves are, they're actually really easy to find because they float to the top, but just kind of running around with a spoon, I just didn't want you to sit and deal with that. Okay, so here we have our bowl of jello. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna pour our wine right into our jello. And kind of stir it around, you know, you've made jello before until it's all dissolved, which just takes a few minutes, but you really wanna go, once you think it's dissolved, you wanna go a couple extra minutes because sometimes there's some little granulars left over and you really want everything dissolved. Okay, and then you're gonna add one can of seltzer water or club soda, take your pick. Club soda is really seltzer water, they just add minerals. It's supposed to help the flavor and it's supposed to increase the bubbles. I like plain, unmineraled water, but you can take your pick. Whatever you like is fine. See, look, it bubbles up and it's all cute. 
And now we have a tablespoon of lime juice, fresh squeezed if you can. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in the fridge and we're gonna thicken it up. We're not gonna wait till it's firm, so maybe about an hour, because we're gonna mix in our sangria fruit and then we're gonna do something super pretty with it. So we'll be right back. Hey, we're back. I hope you're enjoying all this Jello trivia. I just, there was just too much to talk about, so I just had to flash it on the screen because you gotta know. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half. Take a look. This is what you want. You don't want firm setup Jello. You want thickened Jello because that way your fruit will be suspended and it never will go ooh and ah. So anyway, we're gonna put this aside really quick because we have a little bit of fruit prep to do. So all you just need two, two little fruits. You need a cup of orange segments and you need a half a cup of sliced apples. So the first thing we want is apple slices. This is more than a half a cup, but I'm just gonna show you because I am gonna save some for decoration. But you want really cute little thin slices and Pick whatever apple you want. Granny Smith would probably be too sour, but there's a lot of other choices. Okay, and the second thing you want is one cup of orange segments. I prefer orange Supremes, which is without the membrane. I'm just gonna show you how to do that really, really, really quick. So, I have my orange, and I don't peel it because peeling still leaves the white pith, P-I-T-H, on it, and that's really bitter, and you don't want that in your jello. So I literally cut off all the sides until I'm left with this. And then all you do is you take your knife, it gets a little juicy, and you cut in right in between the membrane, and there is a Supreme. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this rest of them really quick, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I cut the rest of the oranges, so now we have a cup of little orange Supremes. You don't have to do this, but it's a lot nicer to be able to bite through just the meat of the orange instead of biting through the membrane when you're eating Jello. but do whatever you like. Okay, so, we have our thickened jello. Oh, I guess you figured out our pretty, pretty way of serving this. So this is a tiny part of my wine glass collection. When I first started adulting many, many, many years ago, I decided this is way before they sold the little charms so you can see whose wine glass is whose. And I thought, how is someone gonna know whose wine glass is it? So I didn't buy a set of wine glasses. I just started picking up really cool wine glasses, just one every time I saw one, and I have this very eclectic, mismatched set of wine glasses. These happen to be my favorites. But now everyone knows whose wine glass it is without a charm, go figure. Okay, so here is our thickened Jello. Mine took about an hour and a half. It all depends on the temperature of your fridge, what else you have in there, but anyway, just this is the state you want it in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in our oranges, and we're gonna mix in our apples. And now it's starting to look like sangria, right? You definitely wanna save some because I have a really cute way to garnish them, so we'll just leave it back. Okay, and then you just mix it all around. You get everyone happy and mingling at this party. Okay, now it's so simple. You just fill up your glasses. This happens to be my favorite right now. I change. So, in goes, you know what, I'm gonna get another spoon. I'll be right back. Okay, I have a better spoon. This one's just too tiny. There we go. In goes our Jello. Ah, you're definitely gonna need a paper towel because it will drip. So we'll just fix that up right here. And you fill all your glasses up and these go in the fridge for three hours. That's probably gonna get them completely firm because that's where you want them. And it depends on how big your wine glasses are. And by the way, this Jello is so good. You can taste the cloves, you can taste the cinnamon, you can taste the wine. It's it's not like any Jello you've ever had. See, Jello can be a good thing. I'm just trying to make my point. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this one. I'm gonna fill up the rest. They're gonna go in the fridge and we will be back when they're all done. Oh yeah, forgot one thing. You don't have to do wine glasses. It's a very pretty presentation, but if you have like a beautiful glass bowl, you can just put the whole thing in there and just serve out of there. It's like, it's not a requirement, but isn't that cute? <laughs> anyway, now we'll be right back. Hey, so it has been, it's been about two and a half hours and it's firmed up nicely. Take a look. Look, I already decorated this, but don't worry, we'll decorate one. Look how gorgeous this is. This is just 
It looks like a perfect little glass of sangria. And all of our yellows, right? They're all firmed up. So really, whipped topping was very popular in the 70s. Very, very, very popular. Still is now, but let's see if this wants to open. So all I do now, let's see, which one am I gonna take? Let's take this one. All I do is put a big dollop of whipped cream right on top. And you can make your own if you want, but I thought I'd celebrate the 70s and use whipped topping. And put a little apple slice in. And there you go. How gorgeous is that for dessert for company? And I promise you, this stuff is amazing. You're gonna absolutely love it. And it's so good. So this is part two of our Jello series. So we're going from alcohol. Next week, we're going to a church dish because we need to cover the gamut and it's all gonna be fabulous. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Friday. In the meantime, here's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even our beloved Jello in sangria form, has a story. I'll see you in the next video.